<laughs> Almost lost my prick. I got my stick. what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a warning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about the uh, African Brazilian mm -hmm. culture to know mm -hmm. why they named it Kashishi, but mm -hmm. to me it sounds like a Kashishi. I'm gonna play a little hip uh, in between thing. We'll get to the reading in a minute, but okay. this has something to do with the fact uh, that I've been involved in capoeira for about the last 40 some years. Mm -hmm. And one of the instruments that we play in capoeira, capoeira Angola, capoeira Hegenal, is this instrument called the Birimbao. Mm. How old is that Birimbao? Uh, 335,622 years. Please. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> you got another one before we... Oh, storyteller, storyteller. Tell me another. Go ahead. <laughs> hmm. I think of this as of, uh, it's a Ladina mm -hmm. with the beer and bow. Very mm -hmm. often Ladinas are vocal expressions, but I, 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 I kind of think that uh, mm -hmm. the Ladina fits Mm -hmm. The uh, instrumental expression too. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a lovely instrument, even though it is hard on your fingers. Well, that's why I got this little thing here. Now I understand. Because I've been, been playing it mm -hmm. a lot, and the beer and bow said. And try to play me. Play me now. Play me now. You, okay. you want to play me now, huh? So right. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm gonna put the salam pass uh, cover on my finger to make sure you don't be bite me in my boo boo uh -huh. because I haven't been playing you. Yes. But anyway, it's uh, a ladina. I'm adding a little jazz in here too, but we'll mm -hmm. come to that. Mm -hmm. I know you were mad at me at first, but now you okay. Thank you. 
right. I've wanted to play it, but it's hard. Oh, no, no, no. It's hard the only play. one thing you have to suffer with, mm -hmm. aside from what happens in your soul, mm -hmm. is this finger, which, I know holds, your pinky. which holds the whole instrument up. Right, yes. And this thing weighs about, mm -hmm. I don't know, about six pounds? Maybe about six pounds, yeah. Mm. About six pounds? Yeah, hold up your this, hand again. Again, the little, this little finger here, uh -huh. under here, uh -huh. you put these two fingers here, uh -huh. bring this finger here, yeah. and you have balanced it. But, and I'm going to run through this real quick because the people who know how to do this better than I do. Uh -huh. But here, you wind up with this piece of I think in the guitar they call it a plectrum. Mm -hmm. We call it a capodastro. It controls. You hear that? I see that. That's by all by itself. This can be copper. This is a washer from a sewing machine, I think. Um, yeah. This is a chopstick from the Vietnamese <laughs> store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, it could be made out of some other kind of material. But that's stick. light and easy. Yeah. It's very okay. light to play, yeah. This is a calabash. Uh -huh. uh, my first teacher, Professor Enrique Cristobal Donagimento. Mm -hmm. Enrique, don't, don't get pissed off because I've mispronounced your name, but you know I mean well. And you put it all together. This is a steel radio tire string. Mm -hmm. It has to be from a certain gauge, otherwise it is too thick and sounds mushy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Or it is not quite right. This is just about right. Mm -hmm. And the wood? The wood is Bariva. Mm -hmm. My friend Cedric Adam bought it from Bahia, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about the whole instrument all together, the kabasha, the mirambao, the stick is about 35 years old. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the older it gets, the the yeah. better it gets. Like a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? I know. All right, now <laughs> let's go on with the reading. All right. Do what I'm doing at this point, after having just finished. Do you want me to take the bit of mile, or you you square it? I'll be here. Okay. It's, uh, okay. Let's call it. Uh, uh, Resting. Yes. <laughs> it's resting. Be cool. Be cool. Uh -huh. After having finished the reading of uh, the last book I read, which was called mm -hmm. Los Angeles, mm -hmm. we're going to ah, take that down. Yes. That's done. That's done. I don't like to do things that have been done. Mm -hmm. And since we have complete artistic control of what it is we're doing, mm -hmm. I'd like to go on to the next thing, the next reading of the next book. Just Actually, the latest. The last book that I've written. Right. Mm -hmm. That ah. you've published, not that you've written. Oh, people I'm sorry. Are, published. Yeah, published, yes. Published, yes, because you've been writing and some stuff has not yet been published. Who speaks? Zola Selena Hawkins. She knows. Uh, I'm sorry, what you say? Ah, uh, yes. The wife knows. Uh. <laughs> 
Shall I continue? Please. Let me take a sip of my coffee because my goodness is nice and spicy. Yes, strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. And smooth. Ah, energizing. Ah, amazing. This book, mm, I think we're on the same page. We are. This book is called The Snake. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, this is I, the Amer American version. There was okay, I've version. had a couple of books mm -hmm. about snakes, mm -hmm. and I'll explain why I've been interested in snakes for a while. Mm -hmm. This is the snake doctor, mm -hmm. and this is my friend Rashid Bahati. Yes. This this arrogant chap here on the front. Quite all right. He's oh, oh, quite a cool fellow. He He's says, a cool fellow. "What do you want?" Yes, and he yes. said a picture, and yes. this is what he gave. Yes. Right up there on the bluffs of uh, yes. of uh, Long Beach yes. and Cherry, mm -hmm. Zola Selena said, uh, Rashid, take off your shirt. And, and he was kind see, enough. He's a superb conditioned athlete. He bicycles from one end of the town to another. Mm -hmm. I believe his son is a championship uh, bicycle. bicycler. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he uh, graciously furnished us the copy, uh, copy for the, uh, the cover, I cover, mean, cover photo of cover photo of this particular book. And, so and uh, my friend and fellow caporista, mm -hmm. Cedric Adams. Cedric Adams. Mm -hmm. Cedric Adams. Mm -hmm. Gave me the second copy, the second uh, cover, cover mm -hmm. of something that I'm calling the Snake 2020. Mm -hmm. to distinguish it from this particular one. And the original one that was more for a European United Kingdom English. Is that correct? Yes, it had more of the United Kingdom English than the other one. But I, that's okay, we're moving on. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay, we're moving on. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to start reading The Snake 2020, one chapter at a time. All right. And I think that it might be of great interest to those who are interested in the Pan-African occult. What does it say on the back, back cover? It says on the back, Odie Hawkins. You. Me. Mm -hmm. Created the Pan African occult genre. And the Snake 2020 is one of his finest examples of that genre. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a problem here because for a lot of people, nothing really matters unless some white man has invented a genre. Mm. So that you have Africans who invent genres and women. But this is the time of Black Lives Matter, so hey. In addition to that, okay. also Black Literary Lives Matter. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Pastor James Baldwin and Richard Wright. Speak, sister. Okay. Speak, speak. <laughs> There are a few other people that have written. Hey, you take out the Writers Guild of America, the, West, give, okay? There's give some me your sisters galley. and brothers there galley. that are writing today. Mm -hmm. All right? And so, uh, and the Bill I'm going to have to read this if you just keep on talking. Bill Brew Bill Writers Workshop. That, there's oh, some writers there. Come on with it. Okay. Hey, come Pat Forte. It, Pat Forte. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Karen Johnson. They Betty White. People. Okay. Oh, y'all. Uh, oh, uh, uh. What's the title? Caldonia. Of name? Caldonia. Oh, Eddie White. Oh, uh, Rob. White, Mr. White. Yes, Eddie White. Eddie White. Eddie. Yes, it is. Eddie. Get your Eddie. book out there. Get your book published. Rhonda White. Rhonda. Not a sister. Rhonda White. Yes. Uh, you know. Get your book out there. Rhonda's doing children's story. But above all and beyond all after what we said, it's, we've got to mention Rose Mitchell. Yes. Rose Mitchell, Hashi. who was the uh, who is now the the the, 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 the mover and shaker of the black writers black uh, writers workshop at Bill Brew, but black, also the the queen of the Black, black Resource Center. Yeah, amen. Not amen. the library, the queen of the Black Resource Center. All right, onward. Let me start doing this because we don't. We're going. Okay, okay. 
I like the part where it says something about you look in uh, Google snakes in Ghana. Okay, I'm reading from the rest of it. It says Hawkins seduce us from the Frankenstein's werewolves and vampires of Europe to take a more profound look at the mythical spiritual life of Ghana, West Africa. Juju is an entrenched part of that experience. What is Juju? Read The Snake 2020 for more information. If you doubt the validity of the story, Google Juju Snake Ghana. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start with chapter one. Mm -hmm. Any snakes around there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> chapter one of the snake 2020. Yes. We weren't ready for Chicago. Chicago was too cold. Too cold and waves that had nothing to do with the weather. Palmer, do you hear me? <laughs> Ralph, Yvonne, I'm sorry, Lenny. Coming from Panama, you know nothing about no, no Chicago winter. Let me start off with, okay. like, again, making this straight that we're talking about something. Chicago. Mm -hmm. We weren't ready. For Chicago, <laughs> Chicago was too cold, too cold in ways that had nothing to do with the weather. Down home, we had a farm, raised a few cows. We had chickens, pigs, a decent home, and despite the crackers, a decent lifestyle. Amen. In Chicago, I heard that, baby. Amen. Okay, tell me in Chicago, things changed. People move fast, talk fast, acted fast. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's what took your great Aunt Sylvia into those drugs. Oh. I don't honestly believe she really knew what they were, what they could do to your soul. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Coming from where we came from in deepest Georgia, the strongest non-alcoholic drug we knew anything about was marijuana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes some of the old people used to smoke it in their corn car pipes. Mm -mm. Now we come up north and here we are surrounded by people selling and using gorilla tranquilizers, <laughs> elephant knockoff drops, mm -hmm. substances that could curl your toenails back. Real drugs. It was especially devastating for Sylvia, I think, because she was the basic reason for our family fleeing to the north, to Chicago. Stop me if you've heard this. Mm -mm. Kojo smiled, nodded, no, as though he had never heard this story, one that he had listened to since he was a little boy. Mm -hmm. That was the only encouragement his grandfather needed with the aid of three fingers of Shiva Rigo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In some ways, our whole family was messed around by our mood. It would be impossible to explain what happened. I look at it this way. We were living in Georgia, had been there since our importation. Hmm. What was that? 18-something uh, or other. Generations. And now, after all these years of maintaining our pride and dignity, we're forced out of our home because some silly, drunk-ass white boy pinches my sister's behind and my brother Jerome punches his lights out. Oops. Kojo sipped his pineapple soda, stared at the faraway look that misted his grandfather's eyes. He had heard the story so often of how the Brown family had been forced to flee this little town in Georgia or be assassinated by the KKK mm. because the family had too much pride. But he could never get ready for the haunted look that came into the old man's eyes. Can you imagine the whole entire family forced to leave their home, their belongings, everything, because we wouldn't allow the white folks to treat us any old kind of way. 
Kojo nodded, agreeing with his grandfather's outrage. The truth of what he was talking about wouldn't register. As often he had heard his story as much as he emphasized, he simply couldn't make himself understand the condition that existed in his grandfather's time. In his day, <laughs> white people ran from black people, not the other way around. But as his father frequently pointed out to him, remember Kojo, this is history. Yeah! The conditions of that time required every Negro, uh, <laughs> black man, woman, and child to be a superman. Mm -hmm. There was so much operating against us, the cold weather, the court, the government, the depression, racism, you name it. I believe it was the stress of these conditions that caused your grandmother to have three miscarriages in a row. Mm -hmm. Finally, as the saying goes, Miss Queen Esther Brown kicked in with our first man-child, your daddy, <laughs> and then the other three uncles. Mm -hmm. Kojo mentally reviewed his Uncle Tate, Amin, Kwabena, and Kahlo. Uh, I don't know what kind of vow Queen Esther had taken or made or, or any of that. But right after Kofi was born, she went down and changed her name to Tanina O'Shaughnessy Brown. Wow. I was so proud of her, I could have busted wide open. I had always wanted her to change her name, but she was so proud of being Queen Esther. So proud. Mm -hmm. I, I, you said, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the old man paused to take a sip of his whiskey. Mm -hmm. Did I write this lemonade into the, mm. into the manuscript? Well, Maybe know. some Southern Comfort, but I don't know about that. Punctuation lemonade. marks. Yes, I The know. old man paused to sit, take a sip of his whiskey, something Kojo noticed that he did frequently mm -hmm. whenever he mentioned his wife, as though he was pouring a libation down his throat and tribute to her memory. Ah, she. Yes, sir. Right after cold feet are damned open, your uncles came swinging to the world. We had an outdoor inform, just the way they, they have in West Africa, to introduce the newborn to the community. Granddad, you, you, you make me think about a lot of things, you know. I don't know if I've ever asked you this. Kojo took note of the alert gleam in the old man's eyes. He loved to be questioned. <laughs> How did you come in, into this? It says this Afri Afri Africanicity way back then. The gleam brightened. That's a daggone good question, Kojo. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You've never asked me that before. <laughs> now, nah, man, I don't want to be guilty of shooting from the hip. So let me think on this for a minute. Mm -hmm. Kojo smiles, the old man settling back into his favorite reading chair. A low slum mm -hmm. Bobby shop deal he had designed himself. <laughs> the man is so, he's so you. You got to be 85 at least, but look at how lean and mean he is, how keen. Hmm. Since your grandmother's passing, I've had only one vice. I like to take a little sip at the nine band. Mm -hmm. He was unhurried, unbothered by the frenzy of modern life. Ah, nothing but fools rushing to see how fast they can kill themselves. Kojo's eyes wandered around the room filled with books that he had spent so many hours in, reading or listening to his grandfather and his uncles. Well, let me, let me, let me start off by saying this. It was always there for us. Don't let them knock you outside of Africa. They've been trying to do that since they brought us over here. Mm -hmm. It was like the air we breathed. It was in the atmosphere. While other children in our town were running around hanging their heads down because there was dark skin and had nappy hair. We celebrated it in our house. 
I don't think I'd ever be able to put my finger on a moment that would say, yeah, you're right there. Mm -hmm. That's where it happened. It wasn't like that. My daddy's parents insisted on us knowing about the true old Africa. Africans had played in the context of world history. World history! Mm -hmm. Not African-American slave history, world history! Mm -hmm. It wasn't a hobby, it was, <laughs> it was serious stuff, believe me. By the time I was 10, I had been exposed to as much of our Creole culture and our African culture and heritage as most adults, probably more than most. Mm. You say Creole. I, I don't mean it in the New Orleans sense of the word. I'm, I'm talking about us as a New World people. Mm -hmm. it, wouldn't, it would have been highly unlikely that we'd have had Native American ancestors or Swiss or Polynesian or any of these other strains in our bloodlines if we had been allowed to remain in Africa minding our own business. <laughs> and, <laughs> Dig that. And in my mind, these admixtures make us a Creole people. Oh, I see, says the blind man. The two men exchanged coded winks at their little end joke. But getting back to your question, it was always there. Always there. How it came about is something that bears some serious looking into. But it was always there. Makes me think of, the, of that experiment the Russian scientists made. A guy named Pavlov, remember him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he the one who did the experiment with the dogs, conditioning them to salivate when they heard a bell announcing dinner? Mm -hmm. Announcing dinner. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 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 that's the boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the thing he did was very, very interesting. He rang his bell, then fed the dog, rang the bell, fed the dog, rang the bell, fed the dog. Naturally, most of them got hooked on the conditioning process, which is the basis for modern advertising. Mm. But they never tell us about the rebellious little black dog that washed out of the conditioning program. <laughs> The one who said, hey, this is bullshit. <laughs> I ain't going to start slobbering every time they, they ring a bell. What if they don't have no food? I kind of have a feeling that our family from that kind of bloodline, the maverick bloodline. We didn't buy into the normal bell ringing, slobber, slobber, little thing. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, the big question is why? There was every reason to go for the open dope. Mm -hmm. People all around us were sopping it up like a molasses. Mm. Like our name, for example. I was named Kwame because I was born on Saturday like they do in Ghana. But my mother insisted on naming my sister Sylvia after her mother, which is kind of traditional too, and Jerome for great granddad. Yes, sir. We started off with a foundation and built on it. Mm. There's a rumor just a rumor that one of our ancestors was off the boat a week, had picked up a newspaper somewhere and taught himself how to read. <laughs> he didn't know that reading was going to be the key to survival in this place. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's just a rumor, but I've been hearing it all my life. Mm -hmm. Kojo smiled at the sight of his grandfather leaning back in his chair, delicately sipping his drink. Mm -hmm. Kojo smiled at the sight of his grandfather leaning back in his chair, delicate, delicately secret sipping his drink. <laughs> he doesn't, he sips. He doesn't drink, he sips. A full minute passed before the old man opened up again. So now then, when are you leaving for the continent? 
he always divided the syllables when he spoke of Africa that made continent sound as though it should be capitalized. Well, if the well don't dry and the creek don't rise, I'll be on the bird come Monday morning. Grandfather Brown gave up a belly laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he loved to hear his old sayings bounce back at him. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Been a while since you was on the continent, huh? Mm -hmm. About eight years ago when Dad and Mama gave me the all-expenses-paid trip to Ghana, the old man took a sip of his drink mm -hmm. in memory of this occasion. Mm -hmm. What was it like, Coach Joe, frankly speaking, man to man? Your first trip to the continent. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit like the question I asked you a few minutes ago. How's that? It's a question that you've never asked me before. Oh, I see. Said the blind man. Said the blind man. <laughs> you know the script. Uh -huh. <laughs> they reached out to each other to shake hands. Enjoying each other's company. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Well, let me try to give you a picture. Subconsciously, he slumped back in his chair, a younger version of his grandfather and father. Mm -hmm. A kaleidoscope whizzed across the surface of his. Mine. <laughs> The sights, sounds, emotions of being in Ghana, West Africa after so many years of being given the best information available by Africa and Africans. Got to keep one thing, one important thing in mind. I was 17 years old that summer, remember? Never will forget it. <laughs> Never will forget it. The whole family was there to see me off. Some of them cried thinking about the experience they knew I was going to have. Number one, the trip seemed like it was going to go last forever, and this was on a super fast bus in the sky. It gave me a deeper insight to what it had been like to come from over there to over here on the slave ship. Mm -hmm. The old man nodded solemnly. Hour after hour, I couldn't do anything but sit there and try not to crack up, thinking about how we had been transported from Africa to America. Now here, I was flying back. The irony of it was enough to make you feel crazy. Mm -hmm. Once again, the old man nodded, remembering the first of his several trips to the continent. I'd like to be able to say I felt a deep, deep sense of being back at home when I stumbled down the stairs of the plane. But it wasn't that. In some ways, being back on the continent was almost anticlimactic. His grandfather nodded, smiled, and sipped. Mm -hmm. I don't mean anticlimactic in the sense of, I, I know what you mean, go on. Mm -hmm. I felt I belonged there from the first minute, and things got better as the days went on. A number of people have told me about the heat. I didn't find it any more unbearable than Chicago in the summer. Mm -hmm. And the people seemed so familiar. I was always being surprised when someone turned away from me to speak to somebody else in God, tree, or whatever. Did you meet a girl? The grandfather asked, crossed his legs, and allowed a sly expression to glaze his face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor grandfather. Yeah. You can tell. I met two. Uh -huh. Let me tell you about them. One was a devout church-going sister, and the other one was an iconoclastic secondary school girl. Mm -hmm. She was what? She was a bohemian type. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Comfort Larty was the same age I was. Which, which one is this? This was the secondary school girl. Mm -hmm. And Grace Vivian Coulevar was the devout church going sister. She was about my age too, maybe a year older. Funny how it happened. I met them a couple of days apart. Let me start with Comfort. Mm -hmm. Comfort lived down the street from this family that rented me a room in the section of our crowd called Osu. Mm -hmm. I know it well. 
You couldn't help but notice comfort. The girl was stacked, granddad. The girl was stacked. I mean, stacked. <laughs> I know what stacked means, Kojo. <laughs> Believe me, I do. Go on. I do know what stacked means. Kojo loved his grandfather's warmth and enthusiasm. His interest in life made him seem super animated. Aside from having this gorgeous body, she had a dynamite head on her. You mean, uh, no, nah, I mean she had a hell of a mind. Oh. <laughs> the first time I spoke to her, she invited me to a radical lecture, a speech by some guy with a Don King haircut. Mm -mm -mm. Kojo paused like a professional comedian to give his grandfather some laughter time. He had never known a man who loved to laugh as well as his grandfather, <laughs> especially if he painted the right image for his funny bone. Two hours later, we were in my room, making outrageously loud teenage love. I hope you use rubber. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Lots of them. <laughs> Ain't that incredible that them African girls, they can go to church eight hours a day and still be natural. <laughs> well, the way Comfort put it was like this. This is what the Lord wants us to do or else we wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> it was a crazy, crazy summer, believe me. The contradictions threw me for a few minutes. Here I am with Comfort, the Bohemian, who wants us to make love all the time and come back to America with me, and Grace, the conservative, equally beautiful, but reluctant to do anything past kissing. Mm -hmm. I said she was reluctant, not frigid. Richard, Richard, Richard. <laughs> Comfort didn't believe in anything that the European bought to Africa. So far as I'm concerned, it is all a crop of crap. Grace, on the other hand, was completely brainwashed. She believed in European superiority, mm -hmm. European ideas, the whole caduza. We argued a lot. Mm -hmm. We talked about everything, the three of us. I spent a lot of time running from one to the other. I guess you could say I was definitely in a Polygamous moved that summer. <laughs> Kojo, you too, my boy. You know that? <laughs> I'm telling you too much. The comment caused them both to laugh, <laughs> and after the chuckles died, they were quiet for a moment. The, uh, the young man gathering random thoughts, the old man waited. It was romantic. No doubt about it. But there was a whole lot more, a whole lot more. I could remember waking up from nightmares, feeling like my chest was being crushed by something many nights. It wasn't so much a nightmare as something else. It took me a year to realize that I had been feeling the pressure of a slave ship on my body, the way our people had been packed in those hell holes. Mm. Despite what you, grandma, mother, and dad had laid on me about Africa despite all of that. There were times when I have this feeling, this strange feeling of being back up inside myself like someone who was looking at himself from centuries past. In mm. some weird way, I think that feeling more than any other is what took me into film. Mm. I thought about writing for a while, but I kept seeing visions, films in my mind. Mm. After that summer, I knew I was going to get into film. I, I knew I was going to get my version of what the African African American experience is about. Kojo drained the dregs of his pineapple soda and stared into his grandfather's eyes. The old man's eyes fascinated him. The milky fringes around the irises, the flecks of gray and orange that showed in different lights. My grandfather's eyes. My grandfather's eyes. The title of the film went a sh sent a shiver down his spine. All the moments I've spent with this wonderful old dude, absorbing his vibe, feeding on his energy and wisdom. So what's the deal now? <laughs> the old dude wasn't dreaming. He was there. <laughs> well, <clears throat> to really tell you the truth, I don't really know what the deal is. I can't really say. I just feel the need to be back in that space again to recap some of the emotions and energy I tapped into 
when I was 17. The old man paused, pursed his lips for a moment, and looked into a distant corner. Well, you know what they always say, Kojo. The fire you go back to is always ashes. Mm -hmm. I wonder to take that chance. After all the ashes I've been through over the past eight years, there has to be a fire there somewhere. Kojo could remember moments in his life when he didn't truly understand what that meant. It didn't register until he got into the USC film school, coping with the institutionalized racism of that institution. This is Odie speaking, mm -hmm. coming outside the strip. I was there. I experienced it. Mm -hmm. Somehow, mm -hmm. at that point, he understood that his grandfather's blessings carried the promise of a spiritual shield. He could recall times when he thought of carrying his grandfather's blessings pulled him over the hump. The old man stood and folded his grandson into his chest. Go on back to the continent and give him my regards. Mm -hmm. I'll be making my last trip there in a couple more years. Mm -hmm. They held each other in arms, lest to stare in each other's face. Kojo felt the urge to cry but couldn't bring himself to release the tears. Yeah, that's what you have to think, Kojo. When you hit your low 80s. <laughs> oh, I see, that's said the blind man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kojo drove north on Vermont, feeling the urge to check the city out before he left. Vermont and Imperial, the red light gave him a chance to take it all in. Vermont and Imperial, two blocks from the first apartments we lived in when we first moved here. The gorgeous sunshine gave the street a brassy orange glow. June 10th, 1996. He pulled away from the light and cautiously, people ran the traffic light frequently at mm -hmm. Vermont and Imperial. Mm -hmm. A few blocks away, locked high school. It always seemed easier to trade train in Los Angeles. It had something to do with sunlight. Mm -hmm. He made an impulsive right turn at Manchester going east to the freeway. It'd be a nice to trip to the ocean for a minute. From mm -hmm. Chicago's Lake Michigan to California's Pacific Ocean. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is better. I can speed a little and not have to do the stop and go number. L.A. He felt he knew it as well as anyone after 10 years of whipping around the freeways. Mm. The miles curling in front of him made him think of an endless track. Are we moving or is the free me moving? <laughs> Anything was possible in Los Angeles. Lock High School. The new boy. Ah. Uh -huh. Let's get it. Let's give it to you straight, Kojo. They say that Lock is a bad high school. Uh, Dad. <laughs> Mom. I transferred from DuSable on. Chicago, bad South Side, remember? Mm -hmm. 15 years old, the new boy, the feisty new boy. We're gonna kick your ass, sucker. Who's first? Mm -hmm. He smiled at the memory of the half dozen fights he was forced into and that he won because of his knowledge of the African Brazilian martial art called Capoeira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kojo, you have to think of yourself as a primary defense system. What that means is that you can be buck naked and still be able to defend yourself. As a 15-year-old new boy, mm. he had been practicing capoeira for eight years. Wow. It had become part of his lifestyle. Mm. He started off each day with 45 minutes of capoeira. Mm. Try that. Huh? Hey, brother. Who's that whirly girl shit? You look like a helicopter when you kick Bunko in the jaw. Kojo bet Yako Brown, the son of Kwame and Njinga Oshadiche Brown, he felt blessed to have them as his parents, to have the, the grandparents he had. They were a powerful support system. Don't ever surrender, Kojo. 
You can never tell when help is coming. Mm -hmm. Winding around the bend that would give him his first clear view of the ocean heading north on Highway 1, one of his favorite drives, he felt exhilarated. Mm -hmm. It was a feeling he could never prepare himself for, but one that always slid in on him when he drove up Highway 1, with the ocean bordering his left for days. Mm -hmm. He clenched into the flow of speed traffic, mindful of the fact that he was passing through three, three police jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. His mind wandering across the collage of emotional landscapes. The move from the south side of Chicago to Golden, California. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be totally honest with y'all. I just never believed that African people were supposed to live in the snow. We moved <laughs> into California. That was his daddy. Your slow drive across the country spilled across his mind. The opening of the Afrocentric bookstore on 103rd Street in the heart of Watts. Whoa! Come on now, brother, man. Mm -hmm. Those people don't even read the newspapers. Mm -hmm. What makes you think they're going to buy books? Mm -hmm. School days. Days. D-A-Z-E. <laughs> Locke was a bad school, low rank, filled with underachievers, gang bangers, druggies, mm -hmm. and an elite, and an elite, that took great pride in being able to say that they had come in on top of all of that. Mm -hmm. Kojo pulled into his favorite seaside restaurant, the gymnasium-sized place with the picture windows facing the ocean. Mm -hmm. This is what it looked like. The picture is done by Zola Selena, uh -huh. one of the first of the pictures uh -huh. that will appear in this manuscript, in this uh, book. Okay, well, what I'm going to have to do is probably give it's you... It's in the, black and white, but yeah, you but see what it is. I, it's the ocean. You can't mistake the Pacific for no other ocean but the there Pacific. You go. There we go. Got that? Got that. Here we go. All right. Would you care about cocktail, Cheryl? The clear diction, the bright smile, the deep tan, the gorgeous bosom. The corn stalk, colored hair, <laughs> almost a caricature of the white California beach girl. <laughs> Let's make it again to stop. There's <laughs> a lot of drinking in California. I got that. <laughs> Must be locked down. Mm -hmm. Let's make it again to stop. And would you care to order now? In a bit. Be right back. He took critical note of the waitress's swiveling hips as she danced away from his booth. Mm. White girl. Mm -hmm. Never had a white girl. Mm -hmm. Never thought about him. Mm -hmm. He stared at the calm ocean, gently lapping at the piling of the restaurant. The sun glazed the water, drawing him into the hypnotic ebb and flow of the movement. Yeah, Dad made a wise decision. Mm -hmm. Chicago was the birthplace, but so cold, so <laughs> cold. He could recall going back to that atmosphere of two weeks to attend a few funerals and felt stifled mm -hmm. by how closed the end life was, had been. Mm -hmm. And there we are with the end of that chapter. chapter. And we're going to be coming up on chapter two in the next Ooh. week because wow. I'm going to read this book because I've been asked to read it by the people who are saying, uh, Odie, they say to me, damn that underground master bullshit, Odie, read the book. <laughs> it's already been published, so right. you can't be running no risk of uh, right. disclosing something that hasn't been disclosed, so here I am. <sighs> At this time in the pandemic, reading a book that I'm taking out of what I call the Pan African uh, Occult. And it becomes a cult. I have to explain that briefly before I'm smothered by all of the good vibes and stuff that I feel. It has to do with the fact that uh, Europe never recognized the occult that stemmed from. Africa. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to take up some slack here. With all due respect to Zardinu Hurston and 
uh, uh, Brother Diop, and all the rest of the people who have been uh, interested in talking about how different the African sense of the mystical and the spiritual is and always has been from the European. But they didn't write extensively enough about it, which is something I'm trying to cover up for without any apologies. And whoever finds it wrong or I don't care if they find it offensive or not, that's, that's immaterial to my case. I'm writing what I want to write about. And if they want to counter write about it, let's get down. I see. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And I say, I share. Yes, I see. I see. <laughs> You, you're too much. You're too much. I'm looking you're at you behind the camera. And for those who know what's going on here, you will know. It's a good camera. It is behind the camera that really matters. Anyway, your website is www.odiehawkins.com. Your books can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes Wonderful Noble, coffee. or your local Straight bookstore. Straight from Budapest. Right. Budapest. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Acton and Tiffany, for moving forward. <laughs> See? <laughs> Something more like old forest, I want to think. <laughs> but, again, um, hope that you enjoyed the reading. We will, he will continue reading till the last chapter. chapter. As chapter two comes two up. Two is coming up. Two is coming up. And we leave you here with uh, a little beer and bow. A little bit and bow. And, hey, uh, ain't no telling what's going to come off musically. Okay. Because they said you can't, music, you can't use music that has always been... Uh, <clears throat> copyright. Copyright. Yes, so, so I have to find some... We have enough music in this household we'll to it give out. it to you. To we'll work it out. And we'll besides, your reading is quite musical. Thank you, Woody Hawkins. You got it, baby. Uh, oops. Oops. <laughs> Shaking and rattle Shaking. and roll. Shaking. <laughs> Shaking, rattle and roll. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>